Hey what's up guys, this is Fatal Keeps here. In this video, I will be describing how uh, the GUI engine will work for the 2048 project. So how everything's gonna be set up in the code. As you can see, I have this uh, file, just an organization chart of um, how it's gonna, what it's gonna look like. So as you see, this big blue box, it says GUI screen. The GUI screen is sort of like the mastermind behind everything happening in the, in the GUI. So the GUI screen, is going to handle all click events and it's going to tell which panel gets the focus and which one gets the update and render. So if let's say you're on the main menu panel, the GUI screen will say, okay, all the click events are going to go to this panel, all the rendering is going to be done in this panel, and so there'll be buttons like play, quit, and leaderboards um, that'll be rendered on the screen and will be able to be clicked on. And if you click on play, let's say, it'll the play button will say, okay, GUI screen, now I want to give the play panel the focus. So now the play panel, and then it's going to switch over to the game board, the stats, and, you know, what else, what, what other else is uh, in the play panel. So I just wanted to give that quick uh, visual of how this is all going to work. You'll see in the code, it's going to take a few, um, probably a few tutorials, definitely a few tutorials, just to get the GUI screen, the GUI panel. Uh, some other things set up before we can start making the actual panels and putting everything together but that'll come and so let's get to it all right let's go so go back to your 2048 project and right click on the source folder and create a new package and this is going to be com.fatalcubes.ui because this will handle everything with the GUI and here we're going to create a new class called GUI screen Right, the GUI screen. So let's look at the GUI screen and see how it's going to be made. First of all, this is a singleton class. All right, so that means that there's only one GUI screen in every project, and any class should be able to access it. Um, now, if you were to create a multi window application with multiple windows, then you might want to say, well, there's only one GUI screen per J frame or per you know, whatever window that you create. But in this case, and in most cases, you're only going to have one window. So we're going to make a private static GUI screen. All right. So that's the one instance of the class. We're going to make a private hash map of string to GUI panel. Now this is going to have errors on it. We'll go ahead and just create that GUI panel class even though Actually, we're going to leave that alone for now. We'll create the GUI panel class. You're going to have that error. It's not going to be runnable um, for a few tutorials at least. But once we get to that, it should fix the problem. A string to keep track of the current panel. This string will be used to identify uh, which panel to give focus to in the hash map when we update, render, and pass the click events. We're then going to have a GUI screen constructor. And this is just going to be private because we don't want other classes to instantiate the GUI screen other than itself. So we just give that a hash map. We just create that. Of course, it's going to say panels, GUI screen, uh, GUI panel. You know, let's go ahead and just create that new class. This is just going to remain empty for now. We'll look into this in the next tutorial. All right, so there we go. So if you look here, we gotta have a private or public static GUI screen and get instance. So this is like any other singleton class. This is uh, the one way that you can get the instance. So we use lazy instantiation. If the screen is null, then create it. Whoops, two L's and then null. If screen is null, then screen is gonna be equal to a new GUI screen and then return the screen. All right, screen with an L at the end, get rid of that. That's good to go. Um, now we're just gonna create a few, a uh, few, uh, let's see, a few methods. First of all, public void update. And since 
since in our game class, let's go ahead and open that up. The game class runs off of two loops, the update loop and the render loop. So it splits the game up into in between for updating and rendering. Rendering is doing all the drawing, updating is doing all the logic. So we also we want to keep those split up. So public void update. And then all we need to say if the panels dot get current panel does not equal null. We need to do this check for every single one just in case this panels array is empty or something. Then panels dot get current panel dot update. Error here because we don't have an update method in the GUI panel class. Just ignore that for now. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to have a render graphics 2D G. Switch that to render import graphics. There we go. All right, so that looks very simple like that. All right, so we have rendering and updating there. Now what we have to do is create a method to add panels, so if the user wants to add panels, or if the user wants to set the current panel. Uh, what is this? What why did I do that? I meant to say GUI panel panel. Alright, so the add method is very simple. All we have to say is panels.put with the current panel. Oh no, not the current panel, the panel name and the panel, like that. All right, so this will add this into the array so other classes can add panels in and specify the name by which they need to add it in. Now one thing you could do if you wanted to make this better, right now if the user were to by accidentally, uh, the programmer were to by accidentally type in a wrong string here, then uh, whenever they need to access it, it would find it, there wouldn't be a panel there in the array by that string. So what you could do is you could create an enum that keeps track of all your GUI panels, uh, whatever enum panels, and then they have like one for menu, play, and leaderboards. <coughs> and then you could add through that enum. But we're just gonna use this for now. It works pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, public. Void set current panel. This takes in a panel name, and this will set whichever panel should get focus essentially. And all you need to do is say current panel equals panel name. All right. Now we go ahead and we need four mouse methods. Okay. So I decided there's more mouse methods that you could use, such as entered and exit, but for uh. I've noticed this all you need is pressed, released, moved, and dragged. So we're going to have press mouse event E, import mouse event, uh, the first one. And we're just going to do this four times. And this is going to be mouse released, mouse dragged, and mouse moved. All right. And here we just have to do a simple check. If panels.get current panel does not equal null, similar to how we've been checking in the update and rendering. So as long as it's not null, then we might as well get the current panel and call the mouse pressed. As you see, all we're doing in this GUI screen class is a lot of passing through. So this GUI screen is really just all it needs to do is keep track of what's the current panel and then just pass the updates, the render, and all the mouse events through to that panel. So, and you'll see that the panel is very similar to the GUI screen in that all it does is take those mouse events and update and rendering and pass it on to the components like the buttons and stuff and whatever else you're putting in the class. So there we go. Mouse pressed E, mouse released E, mouse dragged, and mouse moved. And that's basically it. This is just about it for the GUI screen class. Now, how we're going to use this? Well, let's go ahead and right here, private GUI screen, screen. This is going to be our screen manager, essentially. And in here, we just got to do screen equals new GUI screen. Well, nope, screen equals GUI screen dot get instance. 
so we get the instance there. Uh, two things we need to implement a mouse listener and mouse motion listener. All right, import those and get those events. So just hover over this, add unimplemented methods, and you'll see that it adds mouse drag, mouse move, mouse clip, mouse entered, exited, pressed, and released. All right. Uh, make sure make sure this is somewhere where I can see people messing up it happened to me even um, You need to add the mouse motion listener and mouse listener Right here after the key listener otherwise no key events will be getting hit and nothing will be passed to the screen Now all this board stuff. We're gonna be taking the board out of this class So go ahead and delete that Everywhere where it says board we're basically gonna be taking this out and instead replacing it with screen because now we have multiple screens, so now we're just gonna have screen dot render g. All right. Now in these typed events, so right here, changes to e. We're gonna do screen dot mouse dragged e. Screen dot mouse moved e. Uh, we don't need anything there. Don't need anything there. Don't need anything there. Uh, just something that I want to point out. You should always keep these at override annotations above the methods because you should always be a reminder to yourself that you're overriding some other classes' uh, methods. If you take these out, um, then you don't know necessarily if this mouse pressed is overriding something or if it's your own mouse pressed method. So go ahead and make sure those are those stay in there. Mouse press you want to do screen dot mouse pressed, and this last one is going to be screen dot mouse released. All right, that's just about it for this video. Um, one last thing is, why not? We're going to go ahead and add in update and render into the GUI panel. And we're going to go ahead and add in all these mouse events. Just so it gets rid of all the errors. I don't like to leave things with errors. So, might as well get that done. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Alright, there we go. So, this, this class is pretty much empty. We'll be adding to this class in the next video. But that's it for this video. So, right now, obviously, the game's not playable because we got rid of the only board, the game board, basically. And don't worry, it will become playable again in some amount of tutorials. I'm not 100% sure when. There's going to be a lot of changes being done to the game board class. But that's it for this video, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.